The response study was the pivotal phase three study for the approval of ruxolitinib as second line therapy for patients with polycythemia vera. And it was approved on the basis of efficacy as measured by helping individuals become phlebotomy independent, uh, reduction in difficult splenomegaly, and improvement in symptoms. These were individuals that had difficult PV. They had failed hydroxyurea, they had higher risk disease. It helped to improve all of those difficulties. Overall, it was found to be a drug that was very safe. It can lower the counts, that's one of its potential side effects. Uh, and uh, in patients with myelofibrosis, that sometimes can be a limiter. But in polycythemia vera, that really aligns well with our therapeutic goals of trying to control the red cell count, the white cell count, and the platelet count. It's a therapy in terms of the toxicities that I'm mindful of. Uh, one, it can increase the risk of herpes shingles. That's probably at about five or six percent. Uh, it's far from universal, but it's not irrelevant. So I am mindful of it. I do counsel patients about that. Uh, and certainly if they start to develop symptoms of shingles, we rapidly do give them a prescription for antiviral therapy. It's not a common occurrence, but important to be mindful of. Two, these individuals have a higher rate of non-melanoma skin cancers. Now, in my mind, it still is difficult to know whether that is a ruxolitinib side effect or not. It is in the label. Uh, the confounders are one, MPN patients as a group of individuals have a higher rate of non-melanoma skin cancers. Two, they by definition all had filled hydroxyurea that clearly increases the rate of non-melanoma skin cancers. So those are additional things that I'm mindful of. Now my clinical experience has been very favorable with ruxolitinib in PV and it very much matches that of the response study. And having been an investigator in the response study, I could say that it's very consistent with my practice now. Patients have improvements in splenomegaly if present. I haven't found that they need to have splenomegaly to benefit. The response to study similarly showed that individuals don't have to have splenomegaly to benefit. Uh, individuals, if they have symptoms, they really can have significant improvement particularly difficult symptoms such as pruritus, uh, really tend to respond to very few things other than ruxolitinib, as well as clearly controlling the counts and likely decreasing the rate of thrombotic events. So the clinical experience, I'd say, has been favorable uh, and very consistent with the published studies. The ruxolitinib side effects in polycythemia vera, I find, tend to be pretty modest. Uh, there can be cytopenias, but they rarely are a limiter or problematic. Uh, individuals that have developed shingles, of which I've had a couple, but that's out of a large group of patients that I've treated, we have started antiviral therapy uh, in, in a rapid time frame to really limit that course. In the past, we did not have a vaccine that we felt was safe to use in these individuals because it was a live vaccine. There now is an inactivated vaccine for herpes shingles that has become available. There is zero data in PV patients one way or the other, but uh, I think uh, individuals uh, on the therapy, I have been recommending that therapy to them, even in the full absence of data, uh, on, based on the safety of that vaccine, uh, as well as its potential benefit that it may have uh, for those individuals.